Hi, so today we're going to go through some factorising of quadratics, um, a well talked about topic. Okay, um, and as I'm going to go through, I'm going to show you um, some of the nuances or differences in the way that I explain how you would do this that help you figure it out. Um, so there's lots of videos out there and actually one of my techniques um, is very similar to another one and I will be linking that in the um, in the method below but there's a couple of key differences that I use and I'm teaching this that can really help you um, speed up the process. So what we're going to do is you might notice here that we have our sorry for that sound, just connecting my pen. So what we're going to do is we're going to have three different types of questions here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the very basic, what's called non-monomic, uh, sorry, monomic ones, my bad. So these mean that the value in front of this is a one, which just means your x squared. I'll go through this for some little tricks, but you can skip through that. Um, so this is monomic, I think that's how we spell it, monomic quadratics, okay? The next lot is these non-monomic ones. Okay, so non-monomic. All that means is that the value in front of the x squared is not one, not mono one. Um, and then the last one is this one here. So this is gonna be section two. Now section two is gonna be split into two parts. It's gonna be split in what I call the AC method, which is a long-winded method, but it always works. And then there is a method that I use that if you get better and better at it, you'll actually speed up so you can actually get to do it in your head. Um, so those that want those mental maths, that's that practice, but you will have to practice it. Um, and then there's set three. Now the difference with set three is the number at the front isn't prime. And you'll see what that means here. So we'll have monomic, non-monomic, and then we'll have non-prime monomics, okay? So we'll talk about non-prime, all right? And then I'll go through that one, which I'll show you why a different method might be better, but um, especially if you're getting started, this AC method, um, but we'll go through it. So first one, first one's this one here. So I just wanna talk very quickly about expanding. So if you're gonna expand these double brackets, you might know FOIL, which is this whole thing where you go, or CLAW method, you times this by this and you get x squared. You do x times negative three, which is negative three x. You then do two times x, which is two x. And then you do two times negative three, which is minus six. Notice as I'm doing this, I'm actually, whenever I draw your arrows, you do the sum. That's a big piece of advice. So this is a nice fast way to do it. Okay, um, but I also wanna show, and then you'd collect these terms here which would be x squared, and that would become minus x minus six. And I would expect you to be able to do this very, very quickly, um, to the point that I'll show you a trick in a second. The fact that when you do this here, you'll notice you always times x and x for x squared at the front, and we times the numbers two and negative three for negative six at the back. And the tricky part is the thing in the middle. And what you may notice is that if you do 2 minus 3, you get minus 1, which is the coefficient of your x term in the middle. Okay, I can spend a lot of time going through that there, but I need you to be able to understand this to be able to go backwards. All right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to factorize. So let me show you my method for it. But what that means is take a, a quadratic at the bottom here and factorize it back just like the one at the top. Now it's gonna be very specific factorizing in the case that we'll have an x squared can component and we'll have a constant component. So you'll need this double bracket system. Okay, because you'll need a number times a number for this one at the end here. And you'll need x times x to get that term. So let's look at our next slide. You'll notice this right now, all the numbers are the same. The only thing that I've changed is your signs, and that's going to matter. Hopefully you remember, and this isn't a work on this unit, and I'll, I'll link a, uh, another video of someone that explains how to do this, but what you should remember is, since we have x squared, you know it has to be x 
times x. But the trick is, you know this, these numbers here are going to be two numbers that times to 6. Now what we do, and the easiest way to do this, is we write positive 6 here. And we go, alright, so two numbers that times to 6, but we need them to add to 5. Okay, and that will tell you the numbers we put in here. So we could write all our factors out. So we get 1 and 6, 2 and 3, and that is it. Um, now, if you have a look, one of these that add up to 5 would be these two. 2 and 3. Positive 2 and positive 3. But if we go down to this one here, same thing. X, X. But in this case, it doesn't work because 1 and 6, 2 and 3, when I add these up, I get 7 and I get 5. But we have negative 5. So if you remember, we could also get negative 1 and negative 6. They times together for 6, or they add together for negative 7. Or we have negative 2 and negative 3, which is negative 5. So in this case, it would be negative 2 and negative 3, the order doesn't matter at this time, because when you add them you get negative 5, and you times you get 6. So on the right hand side, and I'm going to keep going quite quickly, on the right hand side, now what we're going to do is we're going to say negative 6. So in this case, I'm going to put the sums here just to be different, we're going to have negative 1 and 6, negative 2 and 3. When we add these together, well that actually becomes what's negative 1 plus 6, that's 5. This is 1. And you'll notice we already have our factors. So the x minus 1 and x plus 6. Now I know we've done this before, it's just a little review. And you'll notice this one down the bottom is very similar, except when you do minus 6, minus 1 and 6 is positive 5, but if you swap the negatives around, you get negative 5, which means this is our new factors. Now, I'm going to rub this out in a moment, but I'm going to explain something. So this is what it would be, but there's a trick. Okay, so I'm going to change my color of my pen, and we'll see if we can go through this. So. On this first one, top left, what you're really doing is you're finding factors of 6 that sum to 5. And that's the trick. It's the what the um, times here, whatever this constant is, you're finding the symbol in front of it. So if it's positive, you need the factors that sum to 5. Well, that's 2 and 3. Now down the bottom, the factors of 6 that sum to 5 is exactly the same. It's 2 and 3 but you just need to consider that they could both be negative. Okay. On the right hand side, the only difference is now we want factors of 6, so things at time, but have a difference of 5. And you'll notice it was 1 and 6 because the difference is 5. And the same for the bottom. The only thing you do, and the only thing I do differently, is when I do these questions, I don't worry about the signs till the end. I find out my numbers. So factors of 6 that have a difference of 5, that would be 1 and 6. And now I think, okay, how do I add these two numbers? One of them has to be negative, I know that, but which one is? So I need a positive to end up, which means the bigger number needs to be positive and the smaller one needs to be negative. And if you ever get stuck, I still want you to be writing out these factors. This trick only helps you figure out are you adding them or are you finding the difference? Are you subtracting them from each other to find out the middle number? Let's look at the next slide. Let's try a couple of questions. First question. So, we want... So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my little line here, my little table. So, I have 18. So, I could just write all my factors of 18 very quickly. Notice I do it systematically. Three and six. Four doesn't go in, five doesn't go in, and then I get to six, which I've already got. So, if you have a note, look, 
We've done our 18. We want to find the ones that sum to 9. So now I've written them, these sum to 19, so it's not that one. This sums to 11, so it's not that one. But these two sum to 9. So that means our numbers are x3 and x and 6. Now we just need to figure out, actually, if I times these together, they have to be the same. Because a positive times a positive is a positive. A negative times a negative is a negative. But I need them to add together to give this number. So that would be negative 3 and negative 6. Okay. Okay. So another example here is that we've got... So we've got exactly the same thing, but this time we want factors of 33 that have a difference of 8. So you could sit here and you could write them out. 1 and 33. 2 is not a factor of 33, but 3 and 11. And you can see they're prime. Well, remember, we want factors. These factors have a difference of 8, so we want to subtract them from each other. That would be 32, and that would be 8. So it's 3 and 11. So that means it would be x and 3, x and 11. And all you have to think of is you want positive 8, so it's going to be positive 11 and negative 3, because when you add those together you get positive 8, but when you times them together you get negative 33. Let's look at one more, which is this one here. So we want factors of 12 that have a difference of 4. Now some of you might be sitting there and telling me what it is already. Just if you get stuck, use this method, otherwise you can jump straight to the answer. So 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. And now you would write 4, but you've already got it. So they're all my factors. And we want a difference of 4. So we do the difference of 1 and 12 is 11. So it's not that one. 2 and 4 is 6. And that's it there. So that means we've got x and 2, x and 6. And we need negative 4. So we need the bigger of these numbers to be negative because then 2 minus 6 is minus 4. Okay, so how does that work when we get to this? So the difference being, to be able to get 3x squared, so first method I'm going to do is the AC method. So it's exact, now this is a completely different technique. This is a method that's used for um, it's a nice long method which will always get you to the answer if you don't make a mistake. So what we're going to do is actually, this is our a value because it's the ax squared plus bx plus c. So what we do is you times the a and the c values together. So we're going to do 3 times, or well, negative 22, but 22 in this case. And we're going to write that out. So it's going to be minus 66. Now minus 66, same thing. We want factors of 66 that have a difference of 5. Now you could sit here and write them out, and you could do 1 and 66, you could do 2 and 33. You notice that you don't have a difference of 5, and you keep going until you find out it's 6 and 11, because that gives you a difference of 5. Now the only thing that's different is, first off, we need positive for 5, so that means this is your positive number and this is your negative number. And all we do is we split this value into those factors. So everything else stays the same, and it has to. We're going to split it into minus 6x plus 11x minus 22. Alright, now as you can see here, this, I haven't changed my expression, they are exactly the same. It's just I've, if I was to simplify this going up, I would get 5x. Now all we do is we factorize the left hand side and we factorize the right hand side separately. So what we can factorize out of this is we can factorize out 3x and we're left with x minus 2. And then we factorize out of this one, which you can factorize 11 and you're left with x minus 2. Now sometimes you might have to put a negative out front here and change the signs of inside the bracket, 
but it's just sort of math magic is what I've been taught and it's I'll teach you is the idea that you'll get the same brackets so they have this is the same factor so you can see that x minus 2 is a factor of both of these expressions but then we've got 3x and 11 okay because really we're doing this times the bracket as you can see above it and you're doing this times the bracket of that one now this is the longer method it is a method that is taught widely in Australia um, and in the UK it's it's a nice way because if you know this trick you can always get to your answer if it's factorizable it's just slightly longer and you do have to go through the written process what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do two more questions for you okay so we have this question here take a moment and try and do it yourself and then I'm going to go through the solution okay so I'm going to do 2 times 99 which gives me 198 this is a much larger number okay now there is some little tricks with this all right but you could just sit there and go 1 and 198 but you know it has to add to 31 all right so that's where the trick comes in so because they're going to add to 31 it's not going to be these so they're going to be much smaller numbers all right now what you could do is you could sit there and you could do a factor tree divisible by 2 which gives me well, 99 and then we got 3 and 33 and you got 3 and 11 so if you want you'll notice that this is all the prime factors so we can combine these in different ways to get this answer here so it could be just make sure I've done this right yep we've got 2 times 3 is 6 and 33 so you could have 2 and 99 it's not that one you can have 6 and 33 that's 2 times 3 and 3 times 11 and you keep going through it you can have 9 and 22 and I'm going to stop there because you'll notice 9 plus 22 is 31 but they need to be negative so we're going to put negatives and both have to be negative because they times together for that factor at the top and then we follow our process so we have 2x squared minus 9x take 22x plus 99 making sure it's the same thing as above exactly the same thing we haven't changed it so it's still maths and factorize each side separately Now in this case, I can see that if I should take a negative out front, because I need this first term to be positive, and I can take out 11x. And I'm left with... I can't take out 11x, sorry for that. Take out 11 out of both, so I'm left with 2x. And that will become a negative, because it has to be negative, because negative times a negative gives me positive. So that should be minus 9, and you'll notice they're the same. I'm going to do one more for you. It's this one here. So take a moment and make sure you've done it first. You can use this method. Now again, this is going to be the factors of 110, 20 that have a difference of 19. Now that's very key here. So they're going to one's going to be yeah, so they're going to subtract from each other and you could sit there and guess as you go or you could do it systematically okay and we could slowly do this here like this so that's a difference of 58 it would be 3 and 40 that's above 4 and 30 
25 and 24. And you'll notice if we did a difference of this, that would be 19. Awesome. So the only thing is, it needs to be positive 19. So it should be a positive 24 and a negative 5. Find your numbers first and then deal with the positives and negatives afterwards. So, rewrite this. It doesn't matter which one comes first. And do them separately. Okay, now this is a bit more interesting, but if I take 8 out of both of those, you'll see what happens. We're left with 3x minus 5, and our brackets are now the same. And you've factorised your quadratic. Okay, this is the first method known as the AC method. Okay, so now we're going to look at it with a different method. Now this is the method I know. It's the idea of looking at what we were factorising before. Um, there's another method, um, I think someone calls it the ping pong method. I'll link that down um, in the comments because that's also a good way to do it. It's very similar, you're guessing and checking, but it builds the content up so you can do it in your head. So what we're going to do is first off I'm going to turn around and I know the only thing to be able to get 3x squared has to be 3x and x. You could put them in different ways, but it's 3x and x. Now what I'm going to do is I don't know what the factors are. It's going to be 22. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the factors underneath exactly like I did before. It's going to be 1 and 22. It could be 2 and 11. Now the only thing that's different is I'm also going to do it the other way around. I'll explain why in a second. Okay, because if you remember when we used to do it before, let's say we had x plus 2 times x plus 1, we'd do x times x is x squared. We'd be 2 times 1 is 2, but we'd also have to do x times 1, which is x, and 2 times x, which is 2x. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this value times all of those values and this value times all of those values. You don't have to, as you get used to this system, you don't have to do it this way. I know some people modify it to their own. So we have basically 3x. So we've got to times all of these values by 3. So you get 66x. You get 33x. 3x and 6x. And we just times these by 1. Now, you don't have to write the x in, but it's a nice way to start. Now, remember, we're going to go back to here. We want the factors, and they're going to have a difference, because one's positive, one's negative, of 5. So let's have a look. First one, the difference of these two is 65, so it's not that one. The difference of these two is 31. It's not that one. Difference of these two is 19, but you'll notice the bottom ones have a difference of 5x. So that tells you that the answer is 11 and 2, these numbers here, that your factors of 22. And all you need to do now is figure out which one's positive and which one's negative. So because this is, has to be that's positive 11, minus 6x gives us positive 5x. This answer here is positive, and this answer here is negative. Let's try that with the next one. Okay, I'll just go back to my red pen. Let's have a look. You can try this method if you like. It's a new method, or you can use AC. It's up to you. So, I know it has to be 2x x. The only problem is I don't know what the factors of 99 are. I don't know which way they are. So you could do 1 and 99, 99 and 1, 33 and 3, 3 and 33. You could sit here and you could guess all of the combinations. 
the key point is that this one over here I'm going to be doubling. All right, and you'll notice as well we're adding them together. All right, so what we're going to do is and double these. Now already I can tell this one when you add one plus nine on ninety-eight. Now the reason I didn't do this is just because it's times by one, so you don't need to really. That's not going to be it. 99 plus 2 is not 31. 33 plus 6 and 3 plus 66 is. So it's none of those just yet. So you can keep going through them. So you'll notice this is 66 and 3, so we could put 6. Um, well, it's not a factor. Sorry about that. So you just sit here and you just guess through it. So you could do 9 and 11 and 11 and 9. Okay. And you just can sit here and you can guess through it. And the key part is that when you double 11, so we're going to keep doubling these, this will be 22 and this will be 18, you'll notice that 9 plus 22 equals 31. So it's this one. So that means that's 9 and that's 11. Okay, if you look on the previous work, that's exactly what we got. So because of that, now we've just got to figure out, all right, we need them to be negative, but when they times together, they're positive. That just tells you they're both negative. Just like before, it's that pattern. One more. I'm going to do this one here before we do a really hard one. And I haven't done the hard one, so it'll be interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing. We've got 3x and x. And this time we're going to have factors of 40 that have a difference of 19, but one of them's times by 3. So you do 1 and 40. Now I wouldn't do this generally because I know I'm timesing this value by 3, so it'd be 120. So it's definitely not going to be that one, but just it's good to practice it. Okay, 40 and 1, which means times this one by 3 is going to be 3. Also, so 40 minus 3, because I'm doing difference, is 37. So it's not that one or that one. Okay, it could be, you could sit here, you could do 20 and 2, and it doesn't work either and you can sit here and you can go one at a time. And the reason is, I forgot what this one is, so we're just going to do it. So we're going to do 8 and 5. So triple that's 15. There's a difference of 7, so it's not that one. Um, we got 5 and 8. I think this might be it. So we got top, this is 24. 24 minus 5 is 19. That's our one there. So, I know the numbers are 5 and 8, but we need to figure out this. It needs to be positive 19, which means this 24 needs to be positive, because it's the bigger of the two, which means the 8 positive, and the 5 is negative. It's neg that's because you need 24 minus 5 to get positive 19. How would this work if it's not a prime number? That's where it gets interesting. So this is more difficult because it could be 10x and x. Now some tests don't even give you ones this hard, but it's good to be able to do it. And then it could be 1 and 6, 6 and 1, 2 and 3, 3 and 2. Now some of you are going to think we need to have a difference of 4, okay, and let's have a look. We're going to times these by 10, so it's going to be 60. Difference of that, it's not that one there, Run through it, times this one by 10, so it gives you 10. Has a difference of, ooh, I should have done 5 and 2 first. So that means this is going to be 6, and this is going to be 1. Okay, because 6 and 10 have a difference of 4. Now, before I finish this off, let's have a look. 
we need this to be positive for. So have a look. This needs to be positive, and this needs to be negative because 10 take away 6 is positive 4, which means this number is positive and this number is negative. The issue was you didn't know whether it's 10x and x, or you don't know if it's 5x and 2x. So you'd have to try those all first, and if they didn't work, you'd have to try the other ones. Okay, but we already know it was the ones up top. When it, if you were to use the AC method for this question, okay, you'd do the factors of 10 times negative 6, which is negative 60. So we want factors of negative 60 that have a difference of 4. You sit here and do this. That has a difference of 59, so it's not that one. 2 and 30, difference of 28, it's not that one. 3 and 20 has a difference of 17. You can see as you go through it. 4 and 15, which has a difference of 11. Okay. 5 and 12. Notice I do it in a sequential order because then I don't miss any. 6 and 10 all has a difference of 4. Okay, so what we do, we need to figure out which one's positive and negative. So if this one needs to be positive and this one needs to be negative, so that you can have minus 6 plus 10, it's going to give you 4. So I'm just going to write this out. can see probably there's a nice way to do this but it doesn't matter I'll show you why split down the middle so the common factor between these would be highest common factor is 2x oh this is a common we could have divided by 2 that's okay it's not the point today so we've got 5 I have 5x minus 3 plus, okay, and you'll notice if you take 2 outside, you'd end up with 5x minus 3, which gives us 2x plus 2, and 5x minus 3. Now, I did all this knowing that I actually could have simplified this earlier, but I just wanted to show you this technique. I hope that's helpful, okay, and I hope this will help you solve some quadratics in different forms.